Pelleggi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Welcome back. Well, we got ourselves a little bit of a quick project here today. This is a digital coaxial cable that I've taken to bits a little bit here. And there's a reason why. Um, the center conductor here has actually failed on this particular end. So I'm going to redo it. You can see I've already cut it off this side. And uh, these are just the exposed wires. And then we still have this other end over here on here. Now I'm just gonna switch over to my macro lens here and we're gonna take a closer look at this wire. Okay, and as you can see here, right in here, this wire isn't very uh, connected very well. It actually popped out of position. It's in there, but it, it corroded. It's kind of hard to pick up on camera, but you can see a little bit of discoloration in there. So what I'm gonna do is, is heat up my soldering iron. We're gonna hit this spot and suck the solder out of it, which will take this wire out. We'll also do the same thing here in the center conductor. And uh, I'm gonna skin the wire and we're gonna redo that on both ends. And the reason why I'm doing both ends as I'll show you here at this end. Oh, and by the way, these just unscrew. And then there's a piece of insulation inside here. And you can see there's actually one wire right down here. This is just one single strand. This is actually making contact, um, which isn't good, obviously. This is actually causing intermittent issues. So we're eliminating this little wire down here and putting the end back on the other end is going to fix that. I'm going to try to make this as, as stock as possible. You can see that they actually used a little piece of heat shrink in here to kind of hold this together. Uh, coaxial wires have a assembly where there's an inner core. You have this kind of uh, insulation on the inside here. There's an outer core. And then you have this jacket. So this is to you know eliminate noise I guess because the center conductor is being shielded against you know from the outside whereas some wires are like twisted pair where they they run next to each other they're not coaxial like this is and that's why digital you know cables are coaxial uh, you can't use a twisted pair you know wire set to transmit digital audio it won't work so I'm going to go ahead and cut this end off while I'm here. I'm just going to use a pair of big old linesman pliers. Let me get right over here to the edge of this. And just snip this right off. We'll clean this end up um, when we're ready to do this. Now this end here, we just have to uncrimp this. Maybe we'll use a smaller pair of uh, pliers these guys here. Just kind of bend this back a little bit. I'll do this on both sides here. You might even be able to grab this wire. Maybe just a little bit more on this one side. Now you could buy new ends, but there's really nothing wrong with these ends. They, they're quite useful still. We just have to clean them up. Now you can see I'm just going to pull this right off this wire here. Okay, let me just zoom this camera out a little bit. I'll take the macro lens back off for now. Oh, you know what? Maybe we'll leave it on. We'll leave it on. We'll just zoom out a little bit. This is actually a combination wide angle slash macro lens. So if I zoom out too much, we'll get this fisheye effect, but there's three pieces to the shell. You have this strain relief, um, which sticks out at the end once you put this through, and then there's this piece of insulation we saw before, and then the outer shell. And like I said, when this goes together, it's going to look like this, but reverse order for now. And we have to make sure that we put these pieces on the other side as well. So I'm going to take a look at this. 
and figure out how much room we're going to need. Now the center conductor is going to start right here and this is going to come out to here. So right about here is where we're going to cut this wire. And I have to find my razor blade because that's my favorite tool of choice for this. So I'll be back in a second. Alright, here we go. A nice brand new razor blade. This is actually old razor blade. These have been around my father's toolbox for God knows how long. Some of them have a little bit of rust in the corner of them. They're so old, but it's good old made in the USA razor blade here. So I'm just going to very gently just score around that line we marked. And just kind of ease this back a little bit. Maybe give it a little twist. There we go. Now you can see here's the outside shield. We're going to take this, and this is actually braided. Let's see if I can get the camera zoomed in on that braiding there a little bit. I mean, I, I pulled it apart just a little bit, but you can see there's just this little bit of braiding going on. So we're going to try to undo this braiding. Because we want all this shielding to go in one direction. So that's going to be our solder point. There's also this, I guess it's a mylar tape. You can see that. It's like a foil, mylar foil maybe. I'm not even sure if mylar is the right term to use, but it's, it's a metallic foil. Try to get this. And what I'll also do is I'll twist this. See where's my little yeah. Sorry if I keep going off camera here. I'm trying to do this through a viewfinder. And then we have this outer conductor here. Which we'll use my favorite pair of diagonal cutters. We're just gonna go in here and grab a little piece of this and pull it. Yeah, let's let's use the razor blade on this instead. Sometimes this middle part is actually a little hard to cut. This is like a plasticky material. Ah, there we go. And then we're going to twist that up. You can also cut this piece off here. Make sure this is nice. And I'm going to do this um, for both ends. All right, we got both of the things cleaned. Now I just got to take a piece of this heat shrink and slip it over. Now I did notice on the original job that came from the factory, they actually made a hole in this and then passed this wire through the hole and then shrunk the stuff around it so this came out of one little spot. So I'm going to try to replicate that and see how that works. And here's my solution. I just cut a little notch in the heat shrink. Here's how to make the notch. I'll take this piece of heat shrink cut off a piece about that big and I'll take this cut a V like that cut a V like this here's your notch and we'll just take this end fold it down like this slip it through and one side is going to be a little longer than the other that's what we want this is just going to go down like this just give this a little more of a twist. The proof is going to be how it, how it shrinks down. So I'll just use my basic lighter over here. Yeah. Yeah, that'll hold it. The thing about using the cigarette lighter is you don't want to get too close to, you know, put it on too long or you'll, you'll burn it. But if you do it quick enough like that, it shrinks really nicely. All right, so now comes the matter of what do we do with these ends. These are actually pretty easy. We're going to get the helping hands out. And we're going to clip this center pin into here. If 
I can position this right, maybe we'll use this to hold it. Yeah, there we go. And then we get a solder sucker. And I got my soldering iron all heated up. This is actually heated up to the maximum temperature it can go because I don't know if this is lead-free solder in here or not. I imagine it is. And that's kind of a pain in the neck to work with sometimes. As you can see, I got my cleaning pad over here. Solder off in the distance. I'm trying to do the zoomed in, so there's a lot of stuff off camera. Sorry about that. Let's see if I could do this with just two hands here, because that's all I have. And we're going to heat this all up with some solder on it. And then this is going to come loose. Pull it right out. Do the same thing here. Here's what one of the clean jacks looks like. You can see we took the solder out of here by using a solder sucker, and then we also cleaned this little cup out. So this unit's actually ready to go. I'm actually gonna take the other one, stick it in here, and uh, I'll show you what we did. Take the soldering iron. In fact, I don't even put, need to put any solder on this. This should melt pretty quickly here. He lied. Let's see. Sometimes you have to do it more than once. Helps if you cop the gun. And now it's jammed. And sometimes, as you can see, you get a little bit too much solder in these things. I have to pull it out with a pair of pliers. There we go. Let's try this again. There we go, better angle. Put some fresh solder on here so we have some rosin. To Clean the joint up. Let's see if we can get this out the way. Great. And a little bit more. Perfect. You should be able to see into that hole right there. We're going to do the same thing with this part. This was easier to turn over. And then we're just going to hit this right here. See that wire is loose? Pull it out. That's it. Nice clean connection. So now all that's left to do is put this back together. So we're just going to take this and just reconnect it. And this is what we're looking for. This center conductor sits comfortably into this little cup. The uh, shield wire here is bunched together right through this connection. It's very close to the jack, or I mean the jacket in both situations here. And I had to open up this crimp here a little bit, but I'm actually gonna crimp this down using again a pair of pliers. We're just gonna cinch this together just a little bit to hold it for now. And then once I am comfortable with the way this is, we're gonna really ratchet it down good. And then also what I'll do is, I'm gonna cut this wire here as flush as I can. And also using the pliers, kind of just bend it forward a little bit, just to make it connect a little better. And also it'll keep it from uh, bunching up when you go to screw that outside connector on. So let's just sit this in here and we'll do the shield first. 
and we're just reverse reversing the, the soldering on this. So I'll just get in here and uh, you know, just solder it up. And turn it around. Uh, center conductor is going to be a little tight getting at. No worries, we'll get in there. Let's see if I can get in from this back here. Now, I don't have the smallest of tips to get in there like I'd like, but this will do. I'm confident I can heat it up with this. Ah, there it goes. Ooh, pin's hot. Now, as you can see right here, it's actually missing a piece of the, sh the shielding, but it's okay. That'll still work. I'm going to put a nice, nice little gob in here to keep that from falling apart again. So the test is, if we're able to take that shielding piece, which of course is now on the other side of the tape here. Bear with me for a moment. Okay, now we can see insulation just slides right over this. I did try to pinch it down a little bit more, crimping it. There. And this goes right on top and should screw right over. And that's all there is to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and then we're going to test this cable out. And here's our other side all soldered up ready to go. Alright, and the final thing to do is just this quick test. Um, we're just going to use the fluke meter here to do a continuity test on it, making sure the pins connect to each other and the shields connect to each other, but the pin and the shield doesn't connect. So we'll set this over here to continuity, which we'll confirm by getting tone over here. And first we'll just do the shield against the pin, which we have nothing. Go off to the other side over here. We'll do pin to pin, which we have tone. We'll do shield to shield, which we have tone. And I'll just double check on both sides. We'll go, we'll go pin the shield and the shield to pin again, and we have nothing. So yeah, I'm very confident this wire is going to work once it's put back into service. Uh, that is the thing I like about these Pro Audio cables that have these kind of removable ends. I have seen these sometimes where they go ahead and fill that with some kind of an epoxy and yeah, once they break it's a real pain in the neck to work with. But this is actually a really nice cable. This is a Hosa Digital Transfer Double Shield Coaxial Cable as it's indicated here on the wire. And uh, yeah, this should last uh, quite a while. Thanks for watching.